it, it's eerily reminiscent of what one hears now. You know? And what did he bring from Munich in 1938? He brought war. Not only not peace in our time, peace not even for two years. The Second World War broke out in September of 1939. Now why is that? Because he was giving Hitler an incentive. I'm not talking about the Holocaust, okay? Just look at this as a war between the West and the, between the Allies and the, and the Germans, okay? Never mind the Holocaust. I'm not looking at it from that point of view at all. It's just a war. A, 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 a very horrible war, but just let's look at it from the point of view of a war. Okay? Now, Chamberlain was saying to Hitler, we are weak. We will not respond. And that was a lie. Okay? So he was signaling weakness to Hitler, and Hitler believed him, and attacked Poland, and that brought about the Second World War. So when you're really strong, and you signal weakness, that's what brings war. That's the, those are the incentives for war. What about disarmament? Disarmament, will that bring, will that, does that make an incentive uh, for, uh, for peace? You know, I, I, uh, I spent a good bit of time, I, I immigrated to Israel in 1956, so that's uh, 55 years ago. Uh, but I spent a good bit of time in academic centers in the rest of the world. And in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, I, I once saw a, a facetious bumper sticker which said, one nuclear explosion can ruin your whole day. <laughs> Uh, all right, it was facetious, it was funny, uh, but it was in this, in this direction of disarmament, okay? Now actually, what made the Cold War stay cold? What was the re refrigerating agent in that Cold War? The refrigerating agent was precisely the nuclear weapons without nuclear explosions, okay? And the, what prevented the nuclear explosions was the presence of nuclear weapons. There were um, bombers of the Strategic Air Command in the air 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, including Christmas, uh, for 40 years in the air, in the air, okay? That's what prevented, um, that's what prevented uh, um, the Cold War from becoming hot. Okay? One last example, the Pax Romana. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate the Romans, yes? They destroyed our temple. I really dislike them intensely, okay? <laughs> But they were the world champ. They are the world champions of peace. The Pax Romana, the Roman peace, lasted for 400 years. For 400 years they had peace. And what was their motto? Their motto was, if you want peace, prepare for war. Okay, that's game theory. They understood game theory. They were the first game theorists. Prepare for war, and then you don't have to fight. If you're prepared, and not only prepared with weapons and with soldiers, but also up here. If you're willing to go to war, then you don't have to fight. And there's nobody that put it more um, better, more succinctly than President Obama. Uh, uh, many people say he didn't deserve the Peace Prize, but I think he did, because of this one sentence in his speech. He's a smart kid, okay? <laughs> the belief that peace is achievable, that peace is desirable, is rarely enough to achieve it. So he is not in favor of yelling peace, peace all the time. He's not in favor of the the posters with the doves. 
And this was in his Nobel Peace Prize lecture. So for a theoretical, to understand peace theoretically, I think he deserves the prize. Against everybody else who says he doesn't deserve it, he didn't do anything. He did. This insight is important. Now in the Middle East, I'm sometimes, I personally, Israel uh, I'm, I'm uh, viewed as a hawk, you know? But the truth is that I want peace. I really want peace. I, I have what they say, Kabbalot, yes, I can prove it, yes. I, uh, uh, I really want peace, and I don't think that what people have been doing uh, promotes it. How do I get it? How do I get peace? By shouting, peace, peace? By concessions? By gestures? By expelling 10,000 people from their homes, like we did five years, six years ago in Gush Katif? No, these bring war, okay? These things that we, that ostensibly are meant to bring peace, what they bring is war, just like Munich with peace in our time brought the Second World War. Munich brought the war, not Hitler, Munich brought it. I'm not saying that, uh, that Hitler would not have started a war later, but in September of 1939, I don't have time to go into the details, it's clear that Hitler did not want war. He thought that the Allies would not respond. We gave them, the not we, the Allies, England and France gave them false signals. They cheated Hitler. The expulsion of the, of the summer of 05 brought the Second Lebanese War of summer 06, the bombardment of southern Israel and specifically Sderot, the cast lead campaign, and the Marmara disaster. Uh, I, I, I'm going to skip the next slide. So how do we get peace? How, how do we actually get it? Yeah. So, uh, usually people say, they say to me, Professor Alman, okay, you convinced us, but what should we do now? So I say to them, well, you guys, you took a, 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 a china plate and you smashed it on the ground it, by, 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 the summer, by the expulsion from Gush Katif from Gaza in the summer of 05, and now you're asking me to repair the plate, to glue the pieces together. You know, I, I don't know how to do it. But still, I'll tell you what I think should be done now. And it's not going to be easy. So the, the important thing is to convince our Arab cousins that we are here to stay. They don't know that yet. We have sent them incorrect signals, specifically the expulsion of Jews from Gush Katif, sent them the signals that we are not here to stay. We're going to expel ourselves. So they that they are still thinking of Tel Aviv, of Haifa, not to speak of Jerusalem, as Arab territory. And we have to convince them that it's not right, and that's not going to be easy. After the expulsion, that will be very difficult. It will take years. So we must be patient. If we want peace now, we will never get it. Never. If we want it now, we'll never get it. If we're willing to wait, our children and grandchildren may have peace. We must sit tight, expel nobody, not Arabs, not Jews from their homes. We should avoid collective measures like denying electricity. When we deny electricity to the uh, Gaza Strip, yeah, we're making a big mistake because we are hitting the wrong people. We're not hitting the leaders, we're hitting the the, uh, the crowd, uh, they don't have anything to say over there, okay? If we want to hit the right people, we should use focused measures, okay? I didn't want to put this on the slide, but sometimes it's called targeted killings, okay? And, and uh, this, uh, this used to be roundly... Um, uh, 
what's the word, uh, denounced by the press until President Obama started doing it in a really big way. Yeah. Uh, and in, 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 I'm not talking about just about Gaddafi's grandchildren or about uh, uh, bin Laden. Um, I'm talking about a concerted campaign in Afghanistan in which thousands of, of innocent bystanders, so to speak, innocent bystanders were killed in the process of uh, targeted killings in the last uh, two or three years. So that's what I mean by a focused measure. We should also, in the same way, we should improve the quality of life in, the, uh, in Judea and Samaria. In other words, enable movement and commerce as free as possible. We should make, we should make life easier because that makes it an incentive, yes, for a disincentive for dissatisfaction it makes people satisfied. Yeah, uh, we're, we're doing none of those things. We should respond to provocations in a predictable way. In other words, you get one missile fired from the Gaza Strip, right away, within half an hour, you're going to get a missile back or, or, or a, a bombing sortie on the source of that missile. Just, uh, uh, in other words, do it not not a, a big war like the cast led, but uh, predictable right away, and that speaks to the element of information. Remember my definition of rationality: it's people promote their interests given their information. They promote their goals given their information. And perhaps most important is to insist on the Oslo Agreement provisions calling for education, for peace and tolerance. In the, this is the, the most important provision in the Oslo Agreement, and it's the least remembered one. Nobody remembers it, and our government doesn't talk about it and doesn't do anything about it. And the, the children that were educated in Gaza in, 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 uh, in the Palestinian Authority uh, 15 years ago, today they're the leaders and, and it, they're becoming more and more hate-filled. They are, we are not, pro we, we must try to change those goals, that the goals, their goals should not be to wipe us off the map. We have to change their information and we have to change their goals, and we have to work to create incentives for peace and not just shout, peace, peace. Thank you very much.